the left has been trying their hardest, their damnedest, to try and collect some scalps recently. There's been a few doxings. There's been the uh, hope not hate reports about some of our own members. Some of you, Hello. which mainly, just to be honest, used you sat there while I said things as the ammunition <laughs> to beat you. They really <laughs> couldn't smear me with much. I'm pretty yeah. reasonable chap. He sits next to Harry Robinson, evil far-right fascist, while he says perfectly reasonable things yes. and doesn't disagree with him. God forbid <laughs> we create voting blocks with their own national interest at heart. It's not like we've been actively importing fifth columns into Britain to do that. Racist. Well, now they've got you. Mm. Yeah, we'll wait yeah. until the second report comes out, Connor. They've Fantastic. Got you now. I'll print that out and wipe my ass with it as well. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there was also the recent doxing of Lomez, uh, who good turned lad. out to just be a good, normal person, uh, as most of the people on our side do, to be perfectly honest. And there's been a recent one, which is Raw Egg Nationalist, friend of the show, who has actually written for Islander Magazine, which again, if you've not got a copy pre-ordered yet, you're already too late, you're far too homosexual for it, or maybe not homosexual enough. We're still out on that one, we're, <laughs> we're trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Weird marketing strategy, but okay. <laughs> Whichever floats your boat. You really. like bumming? Buy our magazine. <laughs> you don't like bumming? Maybe also buy our magazine yeah. and see what you find yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, there's been lots of this. You can go back, and Roar Nationalist is uh, mentioned in stuff like this from the SPLC, another reputable source of objective journalism and objective information. NGOs the world over look to the SPLC and say, that's what we want to be. When this one back in the day, 2022, white nationalist book publishers revealed that is Antelope Hill. Since 2020, Antelope Hill, who I, have we worked with them? I don't know. I don't they? think so. I don't well, know. Well, well, they published Miles' book. They published Raw Egg Nationalist book. Ah. They also publish books from people like Scott Howard, who did the Transgender Industrial Complex, which is a really useful resource for anybody who wants to understand where the money is going in that big industry. Uh, but they also, because there is a market for it, because it's really difficult to find those books for anybody curious about you know, learning about history anywhere, they also are one of the few places, as they point out here, that publishes books and tracts and speeches by... Nazis and fascists. So publishing that obviously means that you agree with everything that is said in it, which is why Amazon is one of the greatest collectors of Nazi um, fiction ever and why they are. Jeff Bezos is clearly <laughs> Hitler 2.0. I was just about to say that. It's also worth mentioning, it's not the only thing they publish as well. You know, They publish lots of things well, and that's so why. <laughs> zeroing in on one thing. It's the same as Amazon, really. It's just like, oh, well, you've, pu you've published Mein Kampf, Amazon. Why... Yep. What's going on, Bezos? Penguin Random House published Matt Goodwin, Jordan Peterson, and Communist Manifesto all together. I'm sure that's a coherent they've just, system. Yeah, they've just got a really complex ideology. <laughs> you just don't <laughs> you don't get it yet. But he's he's mentioned in here. Uh, they also mentioned that again, you can get Antelope Hill books using Amazon. So again, I guess Amazon is also in on this neo-Nazi conspiracy that Antelope Hill is. They're, they're like the tentacles. They've got their, their claws everywhere across the world. They dox the people behind this. Uh, I can't say what the beliefs of these people are, whether they do agree with some of the books or not that they publish. Uh, interestingly, one in this article is described as uh, calling herself a tradcath. So I don't know if that exactly lines up with Adolf Hitler's belief system. No, not not considering his treatment of the Catholic priests off the Reich Concordat. I mean, that should be enough to put any patriotic Catholic off of wanting to LARP as a 1930s German. No, but but of, of course, what the main thing is, is that they love to go about and they love to track down anonymous people, anonymous uh, individuals, anonymous businesses, because of course, in some states in America, you don't have to give all of your information over if you want to just be a book publisher, especially if the books that you're publishing go against the political go against the political grain uh, but they just want to get your name out there so that preferably you can be uh shunted from society well it's intimidation or possibly, tactics or possibly hurt it? But of course <laughs> they're just trying to disincentivize people sharing things that they don't like because it's not necessarily about the books they're actually naming it's about the contemporary politics ones yeah. that are being written ultimately they also don't give their exact addresses but they give the towns in which they live so it's like oh if you just prowl around on any given day yeah. local antifa chapter you also, might just run into them over a polite conversation about their publishing also here's a photograph of them as well you know that's it's these scummy tactics that they always use and then they try and hide behind some kind of veil of journalistic integrity no 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 as a seeker of truth 
it was my job to try and ruin this person's life who just wanted to publish a few books I disagree with. And again, Roarig Nationalist is mentioned in here. Uh, there's a lot of soy raging going on about some appearances that he did, for instance, in The Return of Masculinity, Tucker Carlson documentary that he did with Fox News, which, to be fair, does include some very amusing images like this one. But to be fair, if you look at this man, he is living his best life. Mm -hmm. Who are we to say no to this? To be fair, let's be honest, right? If this guy had a rainbow flag planted on, uh, uh, painted on his chest, Rolling Stone would be celebrating mm -hmm. this guy. They'd be making murals of him. But it's the fact that he's saying, hey, you can be a manly man. Also, Tanya Paul. This is this is me. Anytime I post an absolute banger and turn the turn them the uh, notifications off and yeah, just I'm leave it. I'm surprised this isn't more of a meme, to be honest. Yeah. But you can you can feel the seething when they mention Roreg Nationalists' involvement in this, because of course Roreg Nationalist he has some uh, funny dietary advice that I've never tried myself. But you know, if you want to go and try, and if he wants to advocate it fair play, you've absolutely got the right to, where they complain that, oh, he complains about soy globalism, and apparently the solution is chugging a lot of raw eggs. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Try Better it than yourself. drinking soy milk for your hormonal balance if you're a man. Yeah. That's for sure. The End of Men provides insight into the kind of online spaces and characters from which Carlson and his team are sourcing their grievance fodder. Interestingly enough as well, Carlson recently did an interview with Steve Saylor, so you can tell that this is kind of where Carlson was ramping up for in Fox News, so it's a shame that he couldn't do it with them, but to be fair, he's got probably a bigger platform now through his Twitter videos and uh, YouTube channel, doesn't he? One account stands out amongst the rest, Raw Egg Nationalist, who describes the enemy as soy globalism, which seeks to control communities by sickening them through food. Well, as you just referenced there, no lies detected. Well, I mean, even the microplastics that are present in many of our foods um, eventually break down and Please produce... Don't remind me of the microplastics, Josh. That's been on my mind. Produce estrogen. I've been avoiding drinking plastic. It's filtered water. That's my life. I've been on. doing this for ages. I don't drink tap water. No plastic underwear. Uh, any... Uh, hay fever medication actually lowers your testosterone as well. That's something you released a while ago. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. No. Yeah. Harry, I, I did think you're looking... took an antihistamine before this. I can tell your tits are growing. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as I mentioned, Lomez was um, doxxed recently as well, and Ren actually had a substack about this. Uh, What's Lizzo doing? This is uh, the least attra unattractive Guardian journalist, according to uh, Ren. And he mentions in here, uh, one funny how our guys keep turning out to be handsome, successful chads our and our enemies, who aren't forced to hide their appearance or any other aspect of themselves, are hideous crepuscular goblins, mm -hmm. isn't it? But he also goes on to mention what the tactics are in this and how the Guardian doc, uh, the Guardian, Guardian article, which went on to expose Lomez as being a normal person, how dare he, um, went through this incredible list of all of the journalistic tactics. I went through his court records. I went through all of these civil counsel records to find him when Ren points out that probably what actually happened is that you got some backdoor on some social media or company who gave you his email address or something like that. Uh, did you watch Lomez's episode with Oren McIntyre? No, I didn't. He has investigating whether or not it was someone like Sora Bamari who leaked his identity after he posted the infamous Longhouse article to First Things. Because apparently about a week before this was posted, there were whispers around the First Things office of his identity. Really? Well, that just goes to show how deep these people have are, are on the inside. And also, again, how invested these people are in actually revealing their identities. And right off the heels of that, we get this. From Hope Not Hate, Raw Egg Nationalist himself has been exposed. Now, Ren himself has gone on to confirm some of the information in here, so I'm not going to dance around his name or anything like that. So, um, if, so please... Understand, I'm not doing this to disrespect him, but it is interesting the response and what's going on here and the information that's been revealed. So they're uh, they're absolutely uh, raging about the fact that he's a far right bodybuilder who champions masculinity. They mentioned the um, gl soy globalist quote that he gave for Tucker Carlson, and they quote it in full where he says. The enemy today is what I call soy globalism. The globalists want you to be fat, sick, depressed, and isolated. The better to control you and milk you for as much economic value as they can before they kill you. That's soy globalism in a nutshell. Now, Hope Not Hate have an incredible and big wrinkly-brained answer to this, a counter-argument, okay? You ready for it? 
But if everyone's fat, ill and depressed, they won't work as much and they won't make as much money for globalists milking them for economic value. Pensions. That's that's un, that's untrue because Hope Not Hate gets large amounts of subsidies from the Home Office. And having seen the employees of Hope Not Hate, like Nick Lowell's or Matthew Collins, yeah, you are fat, dysgenic looking freaks. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's also the fact that goes unaddressed by Hope Not Hate that all mud- money in a fiat system like we live in is fake. <laughs> yeah. All of our money is fake. All of it is a debt farm for central banks and all of the uh, politicians who support them. And when you've got things like potential universal incomes coming into places like Scotland, well, yeah, if the money's fake and the purpose of putting it out is just so that you can get it paid back to you in interest anyway, then circulating the money, get people to stop working, give them money so they'll keep buying your random shit that you're selling them. Uh, Yeah, if you're fat, depressed... Gooning gooning, low impulse control, that's an even better farm. You're a model consumer, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. So that's these people obviously don't really know how to contend with the arguments, which is why what they do is they turn around and say, well, I'll just reveal your identity and get you beaten up in the street instead. Potentially not saying that that's what they're actually doing. I don't know if I would be held liable for that, but that certainly could be Mm -hmm. a result of revealing somebody's identity. So... Uh, it turns out that Raw Egg Nationalist is a guy called Charles Cornish Dale, a former academic in his mid-30s who studied history at Cambridge and Oxford and lives with his mum in a small village in South Dorset. Now, they say he lives with his mum. They don't actually really confirm anything, but they mm-hmm. say it appears like he lives at his childhood home. A few things on that. Number one, the most common living arrangement per the house prices inflated by mass migration for anyone 18 to 35 is still with their parents, so not shocking. Two, he's a regime dissident. So it's actually hard to get the kind of sponsorship money that Hope Not Hate get from the conservative home office. And three, we also don't know any details about his mum. She could be unwell, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I haven't haven't asked... I've I've spoken to Rem this week because I said, trustworthy physiognomy, you're fine, bro. But I I didn't pry into his private life because I have some dignity. But if she is unwell, he could well be caring for her, you sick freaks. Yeah, there's there's a lot of points to be made about that. And they also post this one picture... Of him, which I'll be getting back to because they point out here we could only find out one photo of Cornish Dale online taken in 2009. Excuse me, when an essay he wrote for his undergraduate degree got an honorable mention from the Royal Historical Society's History Today Pride. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive that mm. he was being recognized like that. And if he's in his mid 30s, 15 years ago, maybe late teenager, maybe early 20s. So that's pretty impressive for that kind of age to be being recognized in that way. It's also worth mentioning as well that when you're at university, you can't exactly have a bodybuilder's diet, right? You know, it's, it's difficult to have food. I mean, I, it certainly was for me. I you was... can be in shape, and he doesn't mm. exactly look like. No. I mean, judging by his face back then, mm. he doesn't look like he was out of shape or anything. No, of course not. But by the time you're in your mid thirties, you've got a lot of time to build on a lot of muscle mm. by that point. Because there's a there's some criticisms of all of this, and some attacks on uh, Roar Nationalist character, which has been going on from the right which we will be addressing in a moment, uh, which wants to say that he's a fraud and that he's not actually a big muscly man. Also, he he doesn't even have blonde hair and blue eyes and pale, pale skin, did so you see he's him, a fraud. Did you see him post physique? Yes, I did see him post yeah, physique. Good. He, he's in impressive. great shape. Yeah. I mean, once again, he's advocating that you can live the sort of lifestyle that can get you a natural physique, of uh, natural bodybuilding physique from the 50s, and it seems to be what he has. Uh, but anyway, they say at the bottom of this article, Hope Not Hate decided to name Cornish Dale as the man behind the pseudonym due to his growing reach and increasingly extreme rhetoric. Because as you can see here, he posts memes saying, hey, why don't we lock up prisoners? Hey, why don't we? Oh, wait, no, there's, there was this one as well, which was quite funny. You know, t- typical American white nationalist. Yes. Mexican. <laughs> They're always Mexican. <laughs> he reposted this because obviously he must be a Nazi, not because this is always a hilarious thing to find. <laughs> <laughs> and also, don't you understand? I love those memes. He posts mm. Jimmy Dore memes. <laughs> I didn't realize this was Jimmy Dore. I didn't either for a long time. I It weirds me out that some guy at a petrol station must have s- spotted Jimmy Dore 
filling up his car and took a photo. <laughs> smoking a cigarette. Uh, as smoking well. a cigarette. It looks like, hun- it looks like uh, Lawrence Fox dressed as Hunter Biden. To be fair, he, he does <laughs> look like yeah. the midpoint of an 80s thriller film where yeah. you're being tracked down by the killer robot. He looks like John Connor. There could no, be no, no, killer no, robots not, here, Harry. I Connor. hate killer robots. He, yeah, he looks, he looks a bit like Kyle Reese from the first Terminator <laughs> picture, which is fair. You know, that's a compliment, Jimmy. You can take that one. But they... They carry on saying anyone is free to create an account anonymously on Twitter and some will be able to reach as far into the mainstream media as most named commentators as Cornish Dale has boasted. But, but while we grant you have the right to do that, I, Nick Lowell's, am a screeching soy boy who disagrees with all of your opinions and realize that I am not a masculine man. I'm a weak, pathetic potato man, and therefore I must try to ruin your life. It's unacceptable to use that platform to incite hatred and violent rhetoric, unless it's our hatred and our violent rhetoric against others. So, you know, typical smear job, typical... Well, the thing is, actually, it's not even really much of a smear job, because other than saying, OMG, he posts memes, and he also publishes books that say, hey, why don't you get into shape? They can't really do anything to make him sound like anything other than a decent and intelligent bloke. Same with me. Mm. These smear these smear pieces just don't land anymore. It's pathetic. And there's that's the interesting point, is that there was a recent article published by The Atlantic, the far right's new badge of honor. In- extremist influencers no longer need to preserve their anonymity at all costs. Where they're complaining. They're complaining that do- we keep doxing them. They keep turning out to be pretty handsome, normal guys, often with families or family commitments, which are quite wholesome. Why can't we have power over them anymore? And also they're realizing that the bigger these accounts are, so Raw Egg Nationalist, I think, has what, like two, over 200,000 subscribers? By the point they reach that size, if you reveal their identity, they actually already have enough clout to fall back on. It doesn't have to ruin their lives. They've already got enough supporters that they'll go, oh, okay, we know who you are now. Keep up the good work. And in fact, it can actually help to boost their profile. So I think the left is probably going to start um, re-adjusting their tactics for these larger uh, accounts. But of course, that doesn't stop doxing from being a very serious issue for smaller profile Mm -hmm. people who are much more vulnerable. It is worth mentioning that Hope Not Hates um, faff about um, the interview you did with Liz Truss, that just helped get more attention to us. It didn't actually damage us in any way. And in fact, you know, it probably helped make it the, the in thing in the news for a little while, didn't it? Well, the news actively misrepresented it, as did multiple Labour candidates, because they were briefed incorrectly by Hope Not Hate. So they should be apologising, retracting for that. But in terms of actual revenue or people having their curiosity peaked by just listening to what Liz said for herself rather than reading the Hope Not Hate write-up. Yeah, no, it, it didn't damage that at all. It's now the most popular video on the website. So thanks, Hope Not Hate, for paying a subscription. We know you're watching. Get down the gym. You're hideous. Uh, so either Hope Not Hate are actually our secret biggest supporters. <laughs> and marketing want, arm of Lotus uh, yeah, and want to boost us, <laughs> Or they're applying these tactics that used mm-hmm. to work and realising so that, that the funny thing is they, they would have paid money to act, get behind the paywall to watch. So they were, if they refer to us as hate, they are explicitly funding hate. Well, well no, it's, it's, a, it's a tax rebate because the Home Office keep giving them hundreds of thousands. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Now are we ready for the dumb stuff? Yeah, go on. Are we, are we ready for the brain-melting, drool-inducing rubbish that's been going on as a result of this? Is this all the, the great posting I've yeah, been seeing? Yeah, it's, the the... it's the gropers. Now, gonna, I'm going to temper this first one by saying, Keith Woods, I actually quite like. He's done some really great work when it comes to the Irish nationalism, pointing out some of the stuff to do with Irish hate, hate speech laws, mm-hmm. uh, which you have used in the past when you've spoken about it. Yeah. Um, and he also did a recent interview with Lauren Chen on her channel, which was quite interesting mm-hmm. as well. But this is stupid. This is stupid. Raw Egg Nationalist posted this picture confirming his identity because this is a picture that Raw Egg Nationalist posted of himself on his Twitter. As you can see, he's grown quite a bit from the 15-year-old photo that they were using in the Hope Not Hate article, this one here. So you can see, obviously, you know, Pretty normal looking young man there. Mm. Now, the meme war ages us all. The pe- mm. Yeah, the meme war does, but I think he's weathered it quite yep. well. Yeah. And he's also wearing baggy clothes, mm-hmm. uh, which meant that a lot of people went, OMG, he's not actually ripped like he said he was. It's a bit rich coming from Hadith Woods because he's got. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's got elbow physiognomy. Have you seen him? <laughs> like, he's all sinew. He's all skin and bones. Also, you... yeah, about the whole A10 Aryan thing. Yeah, you cavort with Islamists just because you have an obsession with Jews. You don't need to take that Hobson's choice, my friend. It's pathetic. But, I mean, the, the, the thing with this is, is that there's a certain level of dishonesty. Go, uh, going into these kinds of critiques, especially with that whole real A10 Aryan men of spirit uh, thing. Um, and also, there, there is the one criticism, this is the same guy who published modeling photos of a transvestite in his Man's World magazine, by the way. Now, I'm not going to say that that was entirely as Roy Nationalist says, but when he addressed it, he said that it was a photo that was recommended to him by some assistant or somebody else, and he just went along with it because he didn't know who was in the picture. Yeah, that, that, that transvestite in, in question hangs around the Red Scare scene, which is very popular in New York, so the kind of people that... It's a sort of nexus for the racist art hose and this sort of stuff, and so someone passed it along and didn't give him the correct information that ended up there. He's not trying to program you. Yeah. But again, people have picked up on all of this and started posting this 15-year-old photo of him... Uh, not acknowledging that it's 15 year old photo superimposed over this old tweet of his where he says you will never be a real a10 Aryan and this was in response to a tweet that was made where somebody pointed out that this woman with brown eyes had some cosmetic surgery to take them really blue so he posted a copy pasta and the copy pasta mm -hmm. is making fun of the eye chart meme which is not actually serious it's having fun with it right mm. it's having fun with it but now they're treating it like he was pretending to be an a10 aryan all the time and don't you understand he might actually uh, oh, he oh. might be libyan don't, he's an immigrant from libya reading comprehension might be a skill that i understand that mexicans uh, on uh, <laughs> mexican groypers haven't got around with yet. I have a graphic design. I mean, North bloody hell, design. that's but awful looking. What is being said here is that his mum grew up in Libya. She's not North African, had to leave when Gaddafi came to power. Now, the, com uh, the, the context for this is, is that his grandfather was in the RAF stationed over there because <laughs> Gaddafi kicked them all out, right? Mm -hmm. These people have dishonestly said, well, he's obviously a Libyan em immigrant then, also Jewish. Uh, mm. Also, he's just. The, so, was it you that made this this comparison? First of all, it's like Fuentes' fans, no matter what you think of the man, act like Julius Stryker, the lowest IQ oh, member yeah. of the Nazi it's, upper it's, brass. It's really funny when you read accounts of, um, say, Nuremberg, and you read that Julius Stryker was noting down in his personal diary the whole that he was seething, looking at everybody in the stands, just going, "This person must be Jewish. This person must be Jewish. This must." He was wrong about every <laughs> single one of them. All of the prosecutors, my prosecutor, he must be Jewish, wrong. The judge must be Jewish, wrong. That's what these people act like. And it's either because they think that Gaddafi expelled Jews, he also expelled the Brits, or I saw the other one was that um, back in November, Wren said, hey, just because you may not be a supporter of the Israeli government and Netanyahu's cabinet doesn't mean you have to be a foaming, foaming at the mouth supporter of H Hamas. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I don't These have to take that Hobson's choice. That very personally. Okay. And also, then there's just the fact that people are saying, OMG, he's swarthy, so he must be foreign, right? Josh, as our resident expert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm. I've had my genetics tested. I'm, I'm disproportionately British. The most, the most foreign thing I have in me is like Norwegian. I've got a little bit of German and mm -hmm. a touch of French. Just be very small percentages. But mo the vast majority of it is British Isles, right? And you're, um, you're from Devon? Yes. His middle name, and I'm, I'm not saying that means he's from that part of the world, is Cornish. Mm -hmm. So it, it might well be that is he's it? just... His, his name's Cornish Dale. Oh, right. I yeah. thought you, you said Dale my middle Cornish. name is Cornish. <laughs> yeah, so, so it might well be that he's from mm. the same region as you are. Mm -hmm. Also, this is a Scottish man. <laughs> <laughs> the Scottish men can even look like this. Tom Jones. Mm. Average Welsh woman people thought was Mexican after watching Zorro. Understandable, but we can just be very swarthy. My dad is actually <laughs> really swarthy. I got my mother's mm. complexion, but my dad, when he tans, looks Indian. So is my granddad, actually. But know, he's where I got my Welsh DNA I've got a story from. to tell you. Oh, yeah, go on. So in, in year seven, my first year of secondary school, one of my old old time friends who I'm still friends with to this day um, when he first met me as we met in secondary school I'd been on holiday to Spain for two weeks and I 
tan very well. And he genuinely thought I was Indian. <laughs> I've seen the Taliban Josh photo. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think yeah. I've seen that yeah. one as well. Terrorist Josh is a real thing. <laughs> Act nice, he may post it. <laughs> and no here, chance. And, and thankfully, the most interesting thing that came from this whole thing, here's Josh's dad, I assume. <laughs> uh, Spitting image, yeah. yeah. Is that Tom Rousel survived the jive put up a big post, a thread talking about dark British people because it's a thing that it seems that Americans don't really know because they just assume we're in Northwest Europe that we all kind of look like me or you. Americans just think in abstract racial categories, white, yeah. black, etc. But there's a lot of diversity over here, ironically enough, before mm. we invited the diversity over. And you can see this from, here is Tom Jones, average Welshman. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. And give Rorig Nationalists some support because whether or not he's be trying to make hay of all of this, it still must be a very stressful experience to have your identity revealed when you don't want it to be. Hi folks, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us, you can go to lotuses.com for £5 a month and sign up and watch Bo's amazing Epoch series. Bo is, of course, a historian, and he does hours and hours and hours of long-form history content, such as this one on Captain James Cook. These are things th He tends to cover subjects that are actually slightly outside of normal, uh, popular histories. So you get to learn about things that are very interesting that you otherwise may well have missed.